Hello, my name is Robert Thoburn from Forcepack, and today we're going to take a look at how to use 3D model viewers in BIM 360. Okay guys, first thing is to select the model we're going to be working with. So double click on the model you're going to work with, and that sets the model up for you. Uh, because we want to play with the orbit control, let's first of all do a double left click on the ceiling. Then we do a right click to pull up the options. We then hide the selected objects. We then double click outside of the uh, model with the left control. And then when we hold the left mouse click and rotate, you can see the room is rotating around the green spot. Our next most important control is the pan. So we do the left click on the hand and then by holding the mouse left click we can drag the model to whatever position we want on the screen. So that's a very straightforward click and drag. Out of all the controls we're going to be looking at today the first person walkthrough is probably the one that is going to tax you the most. Um, it's a very neat feature but you're going to have to practice at it. So the first thing we do is left click on the individual, the little person icon. Okay, so this brings up your control panel. So by using the arrow keys, you can navigate forwards, backwards, left and right. By using the uh, QWERTY keyboard, you can have a similar effect. However, A and D here are left and right, whereas with the arrow keys, there's a slight tendency to pan at the same time. Uh, these controls will uh, boost you from floor to floor. Uh, we won't be able to use them in this model because there's only one floor. You have the option to teleport by double clicking on a destination and then by holding the left uh, mouse click you can look around you. So uh, I would suggest that you just click OK got it and what I would do now is double click on the wall to go through it and you can see now that you've placed yourself inside the room. So by using the arrow keys, I can advance, so I click inside, I can advance myself forwards and I can turn to the right, I can turn to the left, and I can advance forwards. Now that's using the arrow keys. If I use the QWERTY keyboard, then it's not quite the same so that's W to go forwards and then A to go left and that moves you laterally sideways. Go back to the right whereas the arrow key gives you a slight spinning sensation. So I find the arrow key is much more useful for getting around so that's arrow key forwards, spin to the left, arrow key forwards into the room, spin to the right and you can see the hand basin. If you use the, the mouse at this time, you will find that the uh, movement control by scrolling is just too aggressive and it will step you outside of the room and you have very little control over it. So I go back to using the arrow keys. You can see the blue blob is now back in the room, which is you, the viewer, and you can pan around and look inside the room. OK, let's reset the model and go back to the beginning by double clicking on the model. Get rid of that. Click on the orbit, double click outside and we're now back to the regular room. Sometimes when you're working on a model, you just want it to fill the screen. So you can click on this icon here and that fills the model to the screen. If there's a particular part of the model you want to zoom into, uh, you can start off by hiding some objects. So left click on the wall, right click, hide, left click, right click, hide. Uh, and you want to perhaps have a quick look at this area here. So instead of using the scroll button to zoom in and out, you can use this control here, go to the zoom window, and then put the zoom window in, and it takes you straight to the object you're looking for. You can still use the scroll keys to zoom in and out if you want to. This tool remains active as long as you have the uh, highlighted square. So you can select another area you want to zoom into. 
and it takes you straight there. So it's a bit of a shortcut to getting you straight to the point you want to look at. So perhaps there's now something you want to measure between two objects. So first of all, for example, let's uh, double left click onto the view to get back to our, our base model. Uh, maybe there's something behind this wall here we want to have a look at. So yes, let's lose the orbit control to uh, get a, a reasonably straight on view. You can of course use the, the right view to square it up. Left click, right click, hide. Uh, zoom in a little bit using the scroll key. So now you want to measure to make sure say this electrical fitting is at the right location distance from the wall. So measuring tool click on the object and click on the wall and that tells you that it's you've got 7 foot 8 inches we happen to be in imperial measurements here. It also gives you the XYZ coordinates uh, if the line happens to be slightly out of alignment. Um, but it's a very quick way of, of doing a measurement within the model. Let's reset. The next tool is very handy. It's the section tool. So you can choose the sectional plane that you want to take a view on. So here we clicked on the tool. Now using the left mouse click and hold, you can drag the section up and down. You can use the orbit control by click and rotate so you can see how we are, where the section is and what you've got inside the model. If you click on a different axis, you can have a different section and then you can go in and out. So it's pretty versatile, you can take a section almost at any angle you want, drag it in and out. But if you want to stick to your three primary X, Y, Z, you can use the tool. So we've done Z, we've now got this plane here. And click on there again. And we can now go to the X plane. On the arrow, drag it in and out. Very straightforward to use. And as before, you can use the orbit control. You can use the zoom control uh, to get to where you want to have a look at. When you're viewing a model, it is sometimes useful to be able to go back to the 2D plan uh, and see where the object is that you're clicking on to view it. So if you go to split screen mode, you can see that we now have the 2D drawing off to the right hand side. If we now click on an object within the room model, it takes you on the 2D plan to the object so you can check that it is what you want. Again, you can hide the wall and click on the TV, for example, and it takes you straight away and shows you where it is in the 2D plan. So it's quite a nice way of back referencing between 2D and 3D. OK, let's uh, reset the model. Double click on the model itself and we'll reset. One click inside clears all the previous references that you'd picked up. Uh, let's now take a look at the bill of material that is behind this particular model. So the first thing we do is to move the model to one side because uh, we need part of the screen for the menu. So just uh, right click and pan the model to one side. Then we come down here and we left click on the folder icon. Okay, so this now brings us uh, a list of the items that are within the model. So for what we're going to be doing today, let's simply get rid of all the walls, turn those off, turn off all the floors, and let's turn off all the ceilings. So you can see, you can now turn objects on and off. Within furniture, you have a range of different items. And again, you can turn these on and off, and you can see once you turn them on and off, they appear or disappear in the model. You can see this uh, coat rack here appearing and disappearing. The other neat thing about it is if you click on an object, then it takes you back to the tag and the description of the unit. So that applies to anything within the room. It'll take you back to the tag number and the description. So you can always look at what it is you have in the room and find its tag and its description. Of course, with anything that you're working on, 
you'll want to share your observations and comments with other users of the model. So down the right hand side, we've got a range of markup tools that allow you to do just that. So again, let's get rid of some of the uh, some of the objects we have here that we don't want to be in the way. We just clear up some space. And so, for example, it looks to me as if this socket is behind this uh, working unit. So let's move the model around so we can see what we've got. OK, so we want to make a comment around this. So we can take a typical cloud, pop a cloud around it. We can add an arrow. We can add some text. It says move to clear. If you find the text is too big, then you can use the control here to make it smaller. Got a capital in there which you don't want. Okay, move that down a bit. So you can see how easy it is to make these little markups. Um, you have another tool here which is the point and box, and you can say there mirror wrong type. Pretty straightforward. Um, and you can save the markup, exit the markup view. Then when you go over here, click on Markups, you can see that your markup has been saved and that is an automatically shared with the rest of your team members. So you can choose different shapes that you want to use. You've got rectangles, circles, polyline or a straight line. You can take measurements if you want to measure something from point A to point B. And you can comment as to whether that's the right dimension, change it, move it, whatever else you want to do. Uh, save that as a markup, and you can now see the second markup has appeared. When you click on the markup with a left click, it puts it back in the model so you can see where you are and, and view it right, uh, quite simply. So, as soon as you do that, other members of the model can view and go to work on the comments that you've made. So we just cancel all that off, um, there we are. And don't forget, over here you have controls for changing the line colour and the line thickness. And if you want to put a background in, at the moment it's set to no fill, you can select a background colour. So if you want to tag your comments with colours, then you can do so. Thank you for listening. If you've got any queries, you can email me at rob at forcepack.com. Thank you.